Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today in this video, I'm gonna cover a topic that I get asked on nearly every single video that I've posted to YouTube so far. It's what do I use in the Camaro to get my data and video acquisition while I'm on track? So with that being said, I'm gonna go over some of the items that I use, whether it's video recording, data acquisition, and show you where and how it's connected in the car. Okay, so what we have here is all of the hardware that I use while I'm recording video and gathering data on track. The only thing that you don't see here is the Harry's Lap Time software that I use on my iPhone, which I'll cover a little bit later. But at the top here, you have the cruise cam headrest mount. And the way that it works is that you can mount any kind of camera, whether that's a GoPro or a DSLR, uh, to the top there, it has a rubber stabilizer, which really helps with shake. And then it uses these two posts over here to connect to the posts on your headrest. Now, the downside to this is that if you don't have a seat that has a headrest that can raise and lower, you'll have to find a different solution to mount your camera. Underneath that, you have my GoPro 7. That's a Black Series GoPro 7. And underneath this here uh, is a Hero 4 Silver. So it has this little uh, sock on it or the, the foam cushion to prevent wind noise. I'll typically use this one connected to the side of my helmet. And this one is what I use to connect to the headrest mount. Very important on the newer GoPro. I think it's from the 5 and up. Uh, I'm sure someone will correct me on that. But the 5, 6, 7, and 8 GoPros need this audio adapter in order to connect an external microphone to. And that's the important part. I get all of my audio with a microphone that's connected to the back of my car. And it's a Purple Panda microphone. It's about 40 bucks on Amazon. It's the best microphone that I've found that doesn't clip audio or cause a lot of static. And that's it here. I typically use the cattail when it's on the car. Uh, that seems to give me the best wind noise reduction. Over to the right is the GoPoint BT1. This plugs into the OBD2 port and lets me grab data like throttle position, uh, fuel, RPM, things like that. And right here we have this dual GPS sensor. It's the XGPS160. And this just allows me to get more accurate data through the Harry's Lap Timer software for better positioning on track. I'll show you where I hook all of these up in the car next. All right, here we are back in the garage on this rainy day in Minnesota. Uh, at least it's not too cold. But uh, I'll start off at the back of the car. I mentioned that I use the Purple Panda microphone on the back. And what I've done in the past is I used to just run it through the trunk and let it hang out right in the center here above the license plate. I'd put a piece of foam there and then some uh, painter's tape to prevent any kind of rubbing or scratching of the paint. But since then, I've actually permanently affixed one to the back of the car. So it's right here, just to the right of the license plate. It doesn't stick out much past the factory rear view camera. And what I do when I'm on track is I put the cattail on there to prevent any of the wind noise. The way that it's routed, and you're not really gonna be able to see it in this video, but I went up into the bumper. So I ran it into the trunk underneath the carpet all the way through underneath the factory paneling and into the cabin of the car. Once I got inside the cabin of the car, I ran it down underneath, under the carpeting, under the back seat. And really the only spot that you can see it is that little section right there going into the center console. Now, why can you see it in the center console? Well, that's because I ended up routing it so that I could just lift my center console and it just coils up right there, ready to be used with the GoPro. While we're in here, let's talk about that dual GPS unit. 
it needs a clear vision of, uh, of the sky. So what I do is I set it right back there when I'm on track and I add a little bit of black masking tape to make sure that it stays in place. And you can see it's got a clear view of the sky, plain as day, other than my lights reflecting on the glass. No obstruction. Uh, extremely accurate as far as data. It uses like six GPS satellites all at one time. Since we're on the topic of data, let me show you where this GoPoint BT-1 goes. So underneath the driver's side of the dash, there is, oh, sorry for the shaky camera. There is an OBD2 port, which a lot of dealerships or shops will use for diagnostic reasons. So this simply plugs in. It'll flash and connect, and there's some software that the BT-1 uses itself that you can verify that it's working. But the nice part about it is that once it's connected, you don't have to do anything within the Harry's lap timer settings. It'll connect and glow, go via Bluetooth. While we're in here, let's talk about how we're gonna connect our GoPro camera to the seat using the headrest mount. Went ahead and connected the cruise cam mount to the headrest. I'll show you here, I'll give you a little detail, but it essentially uses these two hooks to grab onto the posts of the headrest. And then you can adjust the, the camera distance in or out by loosening those and retightening them. Now, this will allow you to lower the headrest back down, but keep in mind, there's gonna be about that half inch gap that needs to stay there for the camera mount to connect. Once you've got your GoPro mounted or your other camera, action cam, DSLR, whatever you're using, you're pretty much set to go. Now with the GoPro, the five and higher, I believe you do need the external microphone adapter. That just plugs right into the side. And then that will allow you to connect your external microphone and then you're ready to go. One of the things that I didn't mention earlier is what mount I use to keep my phone in place. And I've used windshield mounts before and they've worked pretty well, but they caused a lot of shake that I wasn't super happy with. So I went ahead and I bought this ProClip console mount and this thing is rock solid. It hasn't let me down yet. Uh, it doesn't move around a whole lot. It does give you the ability to, to rotate the phone if you needed to and it puts it in a position where I can easily access it before I'm on track, after I'm getting off, and doesn't get in the way of the shifter, even in reverse, or any of the controls on screen if needed. That's pretty much everything, everyone. You've got the GoPro mounted on the cruise cam headrest. I've covered where I run my microphone. It's the Purple Panda mic on Amazon. It's great. I'm not getting paid to promote anything. I've just gone through about three or four different microphones before I found the one that didn't cause a lot of static and didn't have a lot of audio clipping. If you go back and watch some of my earlier videos uh, in the Dodge Challenger Scat Pack, you'll hear a lot of that static and some of that audio clipping. That's why I switched over to the Purple Panda. It's been great. I haven't had any issues since. Uh, thanks for watching the video. I'm going to cover the Harrier's Lap Timer software next. All right, let's talk a little bit about Harry's Lap Timer software. You can pick up Harry's Lap Timer on either the Google Play Store or the iTunes App Store for your Apple devices. And what you'll want to do is look for the Grand Prix Edition. Now, the Grand Prix Edition will allow you to interface with all of the data acquisition, like the external GPS, and the OBD2 port uh, plug-in adapter, like the BT1 that I showed in this video. 
The nice thing about Harry's lap timer is that it will allow you to set up your car. You can actually have your car. If you drive multiple cars, it'll keep a database of the cars that you drive so that you can pick the different car before your session. And it'll keep track of each lap history uh, for as long as you own the app. So the nice thing about it is it lets you do video overlays, but more importantly, it allows you to analyze the data on your lap afterwards. So you have the ability to go through all of the different data charts to see where you can improve, where you have room for opportunity to grow, or just compare one lap to another, or even more fun, compare your laps to your friend's laps. Harry's Lap Timer also keeps track of all of your track history and will call out your fastest lap time for each track day that you've had. So you can see I've done a lot of track days at Road America. Uh, it'll keep track of all of those laps. And the nice thing is you can eliminate partial laps as well. So for example, at Road America on your cool down lap, they have you exit the track at five. So you don't get a full lap in. So you can go back into the data and eliminate that lap. Some people have struggled with using Harry's lap timer to actually get the overlay information onto video. And they do have a great tutorial on their website, but uh, one of the other commonly asked questions that I get is, how do you use Harry's? And I'm debating on whether or not I should take on that, that challenge as a YouTube video or not. So again, let me know in the comments if you want to see something like that in the future. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it helps you out. I hope it lets you get where you want to be with your on-track video and data acquisition. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section and I'll be sure to get to them uh, as soon as I can for you. Track season, although the uh, coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic is keeping us away from some of our tracks, hopefully soon enough they open up here. Again, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I appreciate it. Thank you.